Hey, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. I'm Captain Yadin, and to my right, Officer Ben and I. And this is 15 Minutes with the Captain, and today's topic is, do we have to speak Hebrew? Should we speak Hebrew, right? That's a big, that's a big thing in Israel, you know. People use this a lot. Dude. You can't, you got to say the right name. You got to say the right name. Let's look and see what the Bible says, right? Let's start off at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 21. Digging into this topic. A lot of people use this topic to tell us, to make, try and tell us that the Bible's not real. There's no New Testament because you say Jesus Christ. Well, let's see what the scriptures say. Let's start it off. Read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 21. In the law, it is written. It says, in the law, it is written. This is going into the laws. Read in the Bible the laws. Read. Mm -hmm. With men of other tongues. With what? With men of other tongues. So it's letting you know that in the Bible, the laws are written with men of different tongues. It's going to mm -hmm. be different languages. Read. And other lips will I speak unto this people. So it's a prophecy letting, you know, letting us know that we're going to get the word of God. In what? In a different language, in mm -hmm. another tongue, right? But it's saying to the law. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we go into the language and say, okay, well, how to say thou shalt not kill in Hebrew, bro? How to say, oh, put your fringes on in Hebrew? How to say, don't shave your beard in Hebrew? How do you tell your wife not to uh, wear pants in Hebrew? They won't know how to do it. Well, so no. guess what? The law is important over the word of God, right? The law is important over the language. I'll say that. The mm -hmm. law is more important than the language. Matter of fact, let's prove that. Let's go to Psalms chapter 138 and verse 2 to further prove that. Because what's important is keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, not what language you speak. All right? Let's read that. Psalms chapter 138, and we're going to start at verse 2. This is the book of Psalms chapter 138 and verse 2. Go ahead. I will worship toward thy holy mountain, holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. And for thy truth, go ahead. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Read that last part one more for time. For thou hast magnified, me made greater, more important, magnified. Read thy word, the word of God, the laws of God. Read above all thy name. Above all thy names. All, a lot of all the names in here are titles, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you say it in Hebrew. Uh, any different language, right? The word is more important. Keeping God's commandments is more important, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. Isaiah 28 verse 11. To further prove that we're going to be, uh, get the word of God in different languages, right? All the different captivities that we've been into, what did they do to us, right? They took away, uh, it's like in Jeremiah 17, it said we're going to discontinue our heritage. You think we're going to keep the same language? No. The Bible prophesies about that happening to us. And in all the different captivities, guess what? Our captors spoke different languages. So you think that uh, for some way we're going to keep our original tongue? No, that's not going to happen. Keep, let's read that. All right, the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 11. Go ahead. For with stammering lips and another tongue. And what? And another tongue. And another tongue, meaning mm -hmm. another language, mm -hmm. read. Will he speak? To this people. So guess what? He spoke to us in another language. Right here in our captivity that we in, guess what? We speak English, right? Mm -hmm. So we got the Bible delivered to us in English, mm -hmm. right? To some of our northern kingdom brothers and sisters, guess what language they spoke? They spoke Spanish by their slave masters, the Spaniard. So guess what? They get the Bible in. It's in Spanish. And so on and so on and so on with the different, uh, our different tribes and the different captivities. Right, so it's it's a it's a crazy thought to think that before you can teach somebody to keep the laws, you need to teach them first a different language. Do, do anybody know how difficult it is to learn a new language in your old age? Right, learning a new language as a kid that's real easy, right? But in your old age to try and learn a new language, especially since our main language is English which is a bastard language. Mm -hmm. This is one of the hardest languages because it's got mixtures of all the languages in. Mm -hmm. To tell us to, the rationality to, look, before you can get right with God, brother, you have to learn how to speak Hebrew first. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, then you can start getting right with God. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. It makes no sense, right? 
So let's go to Psalms chapter 19 and verse 3. Let's see. You know, we know that God don't hear sinners, right? If you're in sin, God won't hear you. Well, let's see if God will hear you if you speak a different language. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 3. Go ahead. There is no speech. There's no what? There is no speech. There is no speech, read. Nor language. Nor language, read. Where thy voice is not heard. Guess what? The Most High God hears us when we speak English, mm -hmm. when we speak Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. When we speak all the different languages, we speak Dutch, right? Some speak German, Russian. The Most High God hears us in those languages, right? Right? It's no speech nor tongue that he's not going to hear his people, mm -hmm. right? And, and to further prove that, go to Genesis chapter 11, start at verse 6. Who made all the languages? Let's find out. Did the devil make other languages? Let's see. Let's see who made all the different tongues that men speak today. Read that. This is the book of Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do. So at one point, everybody spoke the same language. The Most High set it up that way. Mm -hmm. Everybody spoke the same language. Read. And, and now nothing will be restrained from them. Go ahead. Which they have imagined to do. Go to. Let us go down and there, and there confront their language. Confound, Confound their, language. their languages. Go ahead that they may not understand one another's speech. So at one point, we all spoke the same language, right? But then the Most High went and he confounded the languages, right? Verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad from hence upon the face of the earth, Go ahead. and they left off to building the city. Therefore, is the name of the, it's called ba Babel, Babel, because the Lord did, confound the language of all the earth. So guess what? The Most High God changed the language of the earth. Mm -hmm. He had everybody speaking one language, and he said, I'm about to change this thing up. And guess what? You're going to speak different languages. That's mm -hmm. it? That's all the way verse 9? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, so well, we still got a little bit here. Read it. And from this did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So... When you think of the Spaniards speaking Spanish, the Dutch, the Germans, the Russians, the ones who speak English, all these different tongues, right? Who created them? The Most High God created them. So you think he created a language that he don't understand? Oh, no, if you don't say it, if you don't say it in this language right here, brother, the Most High God ain't going to hear your prayers. That makes no sense. It makes no sense at all, right? So a lot of times when you get into um, the so-called woke community, right? And you say Jesus Christ. Everybody's going to say, you can't, you can't say Jesus because guess what? J was one of the last letters added to the alphabet. And you can't say it because his name couldn't have been Jesus because it wasn't no J, right? But, every, but they say that speaking English to you. Mm. Guess what? Mm -hmm. You couldn't say, you won't be able to say a word with a J. You can't use G. You can't use U. You can't use, use W. You can't use Y, and you won't be able to write in lowercase letters because all that stuff was added afterwards. So guess what? When you say Yahawashah with that W, guess what? You can't say that because it wasn't no W in the English language. When you say Yahweh, guess what? It wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't that wasn't the English language. When you put a Y, it was no Y, right? So people pick and choose what they want to do. People will say Yahawashah. People will say Yahweh. But you can't say Jesus because it wasn't no J. Well, guess what? It wasn't no Y either. It wasn't no W either. All right? We got to, look, it's, it's, it's crazy what's going on, right? But let's see how people try and justify those things. Go to Exodus. We're going to start at verse chapter 23 and verse 11. All right? Y'all listen up. Y'all listen to this thing because this, I get sick and tired of hearing it, to tell you the truth. But let's read it. Exodus chapter 23, start at verse 13. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 23, and verse 13. Go ahead. And in all things that I have said unto to you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the names of other gods. So people say that the word Jesus is really um, Zeus, right? Uh, they say it's Zeus, like hell Zeus, or something to that effect. But they say Jesus is the name of an idol, it's another god, right? But they say, you can't say Jesus because of this scripture right here. Now, go to Joshua chapter 23 and verse 7, and let's get the sense of that scripture and what it's really talking about. 
Because, look, don't listen to somebody telling you about the Bible that they don't know the Bible, nor they believe in the Bible or do the things that's written in the Bible. Brother be smoking a blunt saying, you can't say Jesus, bro. <laughs> look, just say you can't mention no other guy, bro. <sighs> no, that's not who you get your understanding from. Read that. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 23 and verse 7. Go ahead. That ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, Read. neither serve them, Read. neither bow yourself to them. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about saying a name. It's the name of other gods are all through this Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about uh, Molech and different that, right? right? So they all in sin. They weren't supposed to do that. That's not what it's talking about, right? All right, wisdom is the principal thing, and all that I get in, get yeah, understanding. It's saying don't worship and bow down and serve other gods, not say the name of another god. Let's go back to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7, right? There's something else I hear from the uh, Yahya Israelites or from the uh, hoteps of the world. Mm -hmm. Read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 7. Go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Ah, oh, you can't say the name of God in vain. You can't say Jesus, right? You can't say Lord. You can't say God, right? You can't say those things because that's taking the Lord thy God's name in vain. Well, let's get the sense on that. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 9. Listen to me. You cannot get true understanding of the Bible from someone that does not know the Bible, from someone that does not keep the commandments of God, right? To get the understanding of the Bible, you have to be keeping the commandments of God. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 9. Go ahead. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Read. Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. So this scripture is saying the way you take the Lord's name in vain is by sinning. It's right. by sinning. That's how you take the Lord God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's, but let's get other things that people say. Go to Acts chapter 4, verse 12, right? You got to say the right name for you to be saved, bro. Right? This, is, this is what the Bible say. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Let's get the understanding. Let's get the sense of these scriptures. Acts chapter 4, and verse 12. The book of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given unto man, whereby we must be saved. Oh, there it is right there. That's they one right there. They say you have to say the right name, which none of us know the right name, right? We're given titles. It's different names. Some of the different Israelites, they didn't know the right, they didn't know a certain name. They knew different names. We went into captivities where we spoke different languages, right? But we're supposed to think that you have to learn a whole nother language right, before you can have salvation. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Let's give the sense. That's what the Bible say. You're supposed to give the sense, right? Let's not just read one scripture and that's it. Let's give the sense on this thing. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. It says the gospel that's preached on us, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the gospel we, is the good news, but also it goes into God's law, statutes, and commandments. Mm -hmm. Read. Verse 2. But which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. So the scripture said we are saved if we keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, mm -hmm. right? Just all these other scriptures went into how the word, the word, the word is the name, the word, the word, all that we just went into, right? But for some reason, people cherry, <clears throat> people cherry pick scriptures to make you think you have to say a certain name for you to get salvation. That's crazy, right? Go to Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's get some a little more understanding about the name. Read that. All right, let me get Malachi. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 6. A son honor of his father. So this says a son honor of his father. Now, I like to use this scripture because nobody that I know 
that has love and respect and honor for their father calls their father by the first name, mm -hmm. right? Nobody. I call my father father, dad, pops. I don't call my, my father Freddy, Tim. <laughs> hey, Mark, come here. I get the backhand. I don't know about you, but I get the backhand. I call my mom by her first name. You know what I'm saying? Sydney, Louise, Cheryl, Kim. Who talk to their parents like that that has honor and respect for them? Nobody, right? Read that again. Verse 6. Go ahead. A son honor his father Read. and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? Read. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Save the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that that despise my name. That despise his name. Let's mm -hmm. go into it. Let's find out how the priest despise his name. Keep reading. And ye say, wherein have ye despised my, thy name? So he's about to let them know mm -hmm. how they despise his name. Read. Verse 7. Ye offer polluted bread unto, unto upon my altar. And ye say, wherein have ye polluted thee? And that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Read. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, it is not evil. Is it not evil? Is Read. it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? So he's letting them know, this is how you dishonor my name, mm -hmm. right? You didn't follow the ordinances that was given to you mm -hmm. to how to make sacrifices unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. They dishonored his name, right? They didn't honor his name because they didn't keep the statues that were set up. Mm -hmm. Go to Malachi, go to 2. 2 in verse, um, what is that, verse 7? Read. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So further going into honor his name is letting you know that the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Read. Mm -hmm. and, thou, and thou shalt seek the law at his mouth. Go ahead. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Read. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. At the what? At the law. At the what? At the law. Read. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. So that's how the priest violated his name. That's how the priest did not honor the name of God, by not teaching and following the laws and ordinances set up that the Levite is supposed to honor. Right. It has nothing to do with saying a name wrong, with not saying a name with the right syllables, right? Without using the right letters, without saying it in ancient or black or Phoenician or all these different languages. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with not keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Let's get, let's get one more, right? Let's get one more. Let's go to uh, Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read that right here. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's start at verse 9. Zephaniah 3 and 9. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 9. Go ahead. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. Go up to verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Until the day I rise up to the prey. We got to wait until the return of Christ. Read. For my determination is to gather the nations that I might assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. And that has not happened yet. Read. Verse 9, Go ahead. for then will I turn to the people a pure language. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. Mm -hmm. Read. That they might all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. That didn't happen yet. Mm -hmm. So we have to realize that people teaching that you have to say a certain name, you have to speak Hebrew, it's not true. It's not true. Matter of fact, go to Revelation chapter uh, 9, verse 11. All right? I'm going to get a couple more. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. This is, right? the, this is the book of Revelation chapter 9 and verse 11. Go ahead. And, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Go ahead. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abad. Abaddon. Abaddon. Right. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Everybody says, well, look, your name is going to be the same in every language. That's not 
true. Mm -hmm. It's not true, mm -hmm. right? If it was true, it wouldn't be different in the Bible, right? Right? The white man may say that, but guess what? It's not true, right? Some people they name Jesus, host Jesus, right? They change names. Names are changed, right? Mm -hmm. You can't. It's not. We have to stop going off our own understanding of what we feel and what we think, right? People use a lot of these things to bring people into closer to the fold by telling them some kind of secret. You have to say the secret word, right? There's no secret word. You got to keep the commandments of God. Go to John chapter 19 and verse 19, right? We have to keep the commandments of God. If you want to uphold and honor the name, you got to keep the commandments of God. Read that. John 19, verse 19. This is the book of John, chapter 19 and verse 19. Go ahead. And Pilate wrote a title and put it up on the cross. Go ahead. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Great. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew. So it was written in one language, read. And Greek. And another language, read. And Latin. And Latin. Why was it written in all these languages? Mm -hmm. Because those were the languages that this people spoke. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. It was spoken in that language. And mm -hmm. you'll say, well, it still had to say, the, it had to say, how was shot the whole time, though? Mm -hmm. How? It wasn't no W's. It wasn't no Y's. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, let's go. Um, one more scripture. Give me Acts chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 5. Let me show you a. Uh, uh, a miracle that the Most High performed. All right, let's read this thing. Acts chapter 2, starting verse 5. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Right. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, this is a miracle that the Most High is causing to happen, mm -hmm. right? He's causing everybody to hear the men of the Lord speak, but in their own language, mm -hmm. right? And they were all amazed and marveled, right? saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in his own tongue? It's like, ain't, don't these men speak Hebrew? How do we hear them in our language, mm -hmm. our slave language, the mm -hmm. language of the place that we are living, our mm -hmm. captivities? Read. Wherein we were born. Go ahead. Pet Petrus. Parthians. Parthians. And, Medes. and, and, Medes. and uh -huh. Elamites. Mm -hmm. And the dwellers in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. And in Judea. And in Cappadocia. And Pontus. And Asia. Phygia. And uh, Phanphalia. And Egypt. Mm -hmm. And in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. And strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. If the Most High wanted to do a miracle, then why not make everybody understand Hebrew at that time? You know why? Because the Most High prophesied. He understood that keeping the commandments is more important than a language. And that's 15 minutes with the captains, y'all. We're going to end this class. I'm Captain Yadin, and to my right. Officer Ben and I. Right? And we're going to say shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Shalom, most high in Christ. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels.
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.